Okay, hey everybody. Uh, God bless you and welcome to today's study of the Word of God. Now, we're going to pick it up today, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Uh, We've got a pretty long chapter to cover today. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 is going to be covering uh, blessings and curses. Uh, basically, do things God's way, you're going to receive His blessings. Uh, don't do things God's way, you're going to receive His cursings. Just simple as that. Uh, before we get started, let's go to our Father in prayer like we always do. So, Yahweh, Heavenly Father, pray that you open eyes, open ears this day, and let us receive the wisdom that you would have us receive from your word. So, uh, like I said, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get right into it. Book of Deuteronomy, uh, going to school on the word of God, chapter 28, verse 1, and it reads, <clears throat> And it shall come to pass... If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command <clears throat> which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. If you do things God's way, you're going to be the head and not the tail. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Uh, you're going to, your cup's going to overflow with God's blessings. Verse 3. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. This means no matter where you're at, you're going to be blessed. Verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, or the, your offspring, and the fruit of thy ground, uh, your crops, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Verse 5, kind being cattle. Verse 5, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Uh, thy, thy store, this is uh, thy need, your kneading bowl for kneading dough. It's going to be overflowed with dough. Verse 6. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. This means uh, blessed uh, you're going to be whenever you get home, and blessed you're going to be whenever you go out un into uh, outside to do whatever you're going to do. Basically, it's a, a figure of speech saying you're going to be blessed at any time uh, and wherever you go. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Uh, when your enemies, are, they're going to come against you all as one army. And they're going to flee in different directions, uh, running scared. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And uh, this is awesome. Uh, think about it. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee. Basically, God uh, has the blessings just stored up. And all he has to do is just command the blessing on you. And boom, there it is. You're blessed. And how do you get that uh, blessing to be commanded on you? Well, I think it said it at, at the beginning of, of this chapter. Well, it did say it. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set, set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And, I mean, do things God's way, and he's going to command the blessing upon you. Verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself. As he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, do things God's way, he's going, he's going to bless you. 
verse 10. You're not going to, you're not, if you do things God's way and you're in his good graces and you're serving him, you're not going to be able to escape the blessings. They're going to, to overtake you. Verse 10. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And they're not going to want to mess, to mess with you. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to give thee. In this promised land you're going to be blessed in everything you do, if you do things God's way. Verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Boy, have we gotten away from this. Um, you know, right now, the, the national deficit is uh, around 33 trillion, or 32 trillion. So, and we borrowed that from some other nation. And certainly a nation, not a Christian nation, probably China. So we've gotten away from doing things God's way um, as a nation. Now, uh, just because you live in a certain nation, and if the nation is not doing things God's way, uh, if you're doing things God's way as an individual, you God will still command the blessings upon you. You don't get punished for... Um, the actions of the nation as a whole, uh, God judges you individually. But if we individually do the right thing, then as a nation, as a whole, we'll be doing the right thing as well. So don't forget that. Verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Now, not just to hear them and know them and understand them, but you need to do them. You need to put them into action. Verse 14. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Excuse me. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. This is the flip side of the coin, my friend. If you do not do things God's way and you won't hearken unto his commandments and and do your best to keep them. Now, keeping in mind that, you know, we're all in flesh bodies and the only one perfect, the only one that didn't sin was the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're going to fall short in these flesh bodies and we're going to sin. That's just a part of living in the flesh. But that's when we have that repentance, that beauty of Christianity, that whenever we fall short, we can repent for our sins, and God just wipes it right on out of the book, and and it's as if it never happened. Now, you can't con God. You've got to have a sincere change of heart, and you've got to um, uh, be sincere in that you're repentant and sorry, and you don't want to do that anymore, but when you do that, and it's pure and from the heart God wipes away those sins uh, it's as if they never existed <clears throat> verse 16 cursed shalt thou be in the city and cursed shalt thou be in the field no matter where you go your curses are going to be uh, after you or upon you 17 cursed shall be thy basket and thy store uh not going to have any dough in the kneading trough. 
18. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. So, you're not going to uh, have offspring as the stars, as the sand of the sea. And your cattle are not going to increase uh, as they would if you were blessed, nor your sheep. Verse 19. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. No matter where you're at. 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. <clears throat> Excuse me. The vexation. Now this is uh, confusion, destruction, or trouble. Verse 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence a cleave unto thee until he hath consumed thee from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. Um, the Lord's going to make the plague cleave unto you. And the pestilence. Think about what just recently happened and is still happening in our nation. Uh, COVID-19. You think that uh, is an accident? I don't think so. I think that's a pestilence, beloved, sent by our Heavenly Father um, as chastisement for us not doing things God's way. You can form your own opinions about that, but that's mine. Uh, not that it matters, but so be it. <clears throat> Verse 22. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with fever. Now this uh, this consumption, this is uh, emaciation or starvation. <clears throat> and with fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning. Now, this extreme burning, this is going to be uh, drought. And that's because the following, um, con the context of the next, uh, and the subject of the following uh, sentence, and the rest of the sentence, has got to do with uh, crops and agriculture. And with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. They're going to eat your crops up. You're not going to have anything uh, growing in your field. Verse 23. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. There's not going to be any rain, and the ground is not going to produce for you. 24. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. It's going to be so dry that all you're going to see for rain and all that's going to be coming down in the air is going to be dust. You're going to have dust storms instead of rainstorms. 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them, and shall be removed unto all the kingdoms of the earth. You're going to go out as a solid army against your enemies, and you're going to run, flee in different directions from them. And and, and you're going to be scattered into all the kingdoms of the earth. Boy, has this come to pass. The Christian nations are scattered all over the earth to this day. Verse 26. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them, or no man shall frighten them. <clears throat> Excuse me. 27. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emrods, and with the scab, and with the itch, Whereof thou canst not be healed. This botch of Egypt. This is boils. Emrods. That's hemorrhoids. And that's a pretty uncomfortable thing. Boils and emrods. Hem hemorrhoids. And uh, this itch. 
uh, or this scab, this is probably uh, like aggravated psoriasis that itches really bad. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Uh, this madness, this is craziness. You're going to be going crazy. And astonishment is anxiety or dismay of heart. You're going to be just anxious as you can be. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. It's going to be awful, my friend. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. You get engaged to a woman, and another man's going to end up sleeping with her. Thou shalt, thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shall not gather the grapes thereof. You're going to do all the work, and some uh, somebody else is going to enjoy uh, the work of your hands. This is what you get for not doing things, or what you're going to get if you don't do things God's way. And you say, oh, this is the Old Testament, my friend. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, pertain to us this day. Oh, okay. Try, try doing things uh, not God's way and see if these curses don't overtake you. And then, uh, just, just as so, try doing things God's way and see and witness that watch these blessings overtake you. It does, it does pertain to this day. Excuse me. 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. <clears throat> your enemies are going to overtake you. They're going to kill your cattle and eat it right in front of your face. And they're going to steal your donkeys. And you're not going to be able to, and you're not going to get it restored to you. You're not going to be able to do anything about it. 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Uh, your daughters and sons are going to be taken captive, and you're not going to have the strength uh, militarily to go and, and fight for them and rescue them, uh, get them back. And you're going to be longing for them every day and night. 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed alway. It's going to be really rough on you. 34. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. It's going to drive you insane for what you see happening to you. 35. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with the sore botch that cannot, that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. You know, you're going to be sick, my friend. 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there thou shalt serve other gods, wood, and stone. <clears throat> 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. This uh, astonishment, this is, a, you're going to become a ruin. And a proverb means a simile, a poem, or a parable. You're going to become a saying that people are going to compare you to, or going to compare uh, things to. <clears throat> 38. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shall gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. 
And this made me think of, uh, you can take this literally or spiritually. This even made me think of Revelation chapter 9. The locust army of Satan that's going to torment those that have not the seal of God in their forehead for five months whenever Satan shows up on the scene. <clears throat> that's even going to be cursed for sure. Or those that have not the seal of God in their forehead are basically those, uh, are not basically before a fact, those who do not know the truth of God's word. How do you get that seal of God in your forehead? You study God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And if you have trouble understanding, study under a teacher that teaches God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And first off, ask God to help you understand. Uh, he will. I know he does me all the time. Help me understand. 39. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. Forty. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coast. But thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast his fruit. Uh, basically, your olive trees are going to cast the olives before they mature. So you're not ever going to have any good olives to make anointing oil with. 41. Thou shalt begat sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. 42. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. You're going to eat up all your crops. 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high and thou shalt come down very low. 44. He shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him he shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail. This makes me even think of today. Uh, like I said, our national deficit, 33 trillion. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he command thee. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. The curses. 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he hath destroyed thee. Now this yoke of iron, this is going to be a heavy yoke, uh, or a yoke of grievous bondage. <clears throat> Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as a swift and eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue Thou shalt not understand. This is talking about um, uh, Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar that would come and take Jerusalem and the ten tribes into captivity for 70 years. This happened in Jeremiah chapter 39. Or this would happen in Jeremiah chapter 39. <clears throat> Verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of old, nor show favor to the young. This means when the army overtakes you, they're not going to have any sympathy on your elderly or your young ones. Uh, they're going to treat everyone as if they were uh, uh, men of, or women of fighting age. They're not going to have any sympathy. Verse 51. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle... And the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, 
or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he hath destroyed thee. He's going to totally clean you out. Verse 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, until thy high walls and fenced walls, until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou, thou trustest, throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. He's going to take over all your strongholds. 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. This means uh, while you're being sieged uh, and starved out, basically, you're going to result to eating your own children. The flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. 54. So that the man that is tender among you, or the, even the sensitive man among you, and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom, bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave. 55. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children excuse me, whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left him in the siege, and in the straightness wherewith the, thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. This means that he's going to be so hungry, he's going to result to eating his own kids, and he's not even going to share with any of his family. It's going to get pretty rough. And uh, you think these things don't happen? Well, it came to pass um, whenever uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians uh, besieged Jerusalem and took the ten tribes captive. Uh, and if you get hungry enough, uh, that's what happens is people result to cannibalism if there's nothing left to eat. <clears throat> so do things God's way. You won't have to worry about any of this, any of these cursings coming upon you. Don't do things God's way. And you can be sure that the cursings are going to come upon you. And God will even use your enemy, um, as his rod of correction or to chastise you to let you to overtake you <clears throat> but if you do things God's way he's going to be with you and you don't have to worry about uh, your enemies overtaking you in battle or you don't have to worry about any of these curses so uh, it's much better my friend to just do things God's way and receive his blessings uh, rather than the other side of the coin and receive the cursings that we're reading about now. <clears throat> Verse 56. The tender and delicate woman among you. This means the, the refined woman. Or the, the, the sensitive and refined woman among you. Which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. This meaning she's so refined and sensitive. Um, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter 57 and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet this is from her children that she births and toward her children which she shall bear for she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege of straight and straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in thy gates She's going to uh, eat her own kids in secret uh, because she's going to be so hungry when this siege is coming upon uh, Jerusalem. 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear the glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, this means Yahweh thy Elohim, thy creator. 59. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plague of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness, and of long continuance. These plagues, they're, they're, they're never going to go away. You're not going to be able to heal yourself. 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of. And they shall cleave unto thee. 61. Also every sickness and every plague 
which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get really bad. You're going to be one sick individual. Verse 62. And ye shall be left few in number. Whereas you were, whereas you were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Again, obey God to the best of your ability, and when you fall short, repent, or don't, and receive his cursings. 63. And it shall come to pass that, and it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do good, and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you, and to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. God may have given you this promised land, but he can pluck you right up out of it just as quick as he gave it to you. Verse 64, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all, the, among all people, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. You're going to be captive, uh, taken in captivity in uh, the land of your heathen, and you're going to end up serving their gods. 65. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. You're going to have a, a you're going to be living in fear, complete fear, and you're going to be uh, blind uh, uh, in your old age, and even not, and even spiritually blind, and sorrow of mind. You're just going to be depressed all the time. Verse 66. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. Sixty-seven. In the morning thou shalt say, "Would God it were even." This means in the morning you're going to say, um, "I pray to God that I live until the evening." And at even thou shalt say, "Would God it were morning." And in the evening, you're going to say, I pray to God we, we even make it into the morning. You're going to be, uh, you're going to have so much anxiety and terror uh, among you, living among your enemies. And you're going to be a slave, basically. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. You're going to be surrounded by your enemy. You're going to be serving them. The curses are going to be upon you, and it's going to be awful. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And this means God's going to take you uh, back to Egypt in, in slave galleys on the path wherewith he, he brought you out of Egypt that he told you you were not to return uh, back down. You're going to be taken back down it in slave galleys. And you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen as slaves and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. You're going to be taken back into Egypt in slave galleys to be sold as slaves, and you're probably even going to be excited about getting, getting back into Egypt as slaves, but no man is even going to buy you as a slave. And it's going to be that rough. Uh, if but but you don't have to worry about any of these things if you just do things God's way, do your best, and then whenever you fall short, you just repent. You just ask for forgiveness, and the blood of Jesus Christ wipes those sins out, and you have a totally clean slate as, as if those sins never even happened. Uh, that's the beauty of Christianity, and that, that's the great thing about being a Christian is having that repentance and the blood of Jesus Christ being able to wash those sins away. So whenever you do fall short, you can have a clean slate and get right back in God's good graces and get on with serving Him. But, as you read in this Deuteronomy chapter 28, if you don't do things God's way, uh, that's the opposite side of the coin. There's plenty of cursings to come along uh, upon you and overtake you uh, 
just as if you do things God's way, the blessings will overtake you. Okay, that's going to conclude chapter 28 and today's study of the Word of God. I love you all. Um, more importantly, God loves you for studying His Word. And whenever you do study His Word, chapter by chapter and verse by verse, you can expect those blessings to come upon you and overtake you and your family. Uh, whenever you don't, whenever you choose to ignore God and ignore this love letter that He's written to you, uh, you can expect the cursings to come upon you, my friend. That's just how it is. Uh, God doesn't have any partiality towards persons, and uh, I love I love Him for that, that He's fair. All right, don't miss the next lecture. Uh, thank you for watching, and stay in His Word every day, and be blessed. All right, love you all. See you next time.